approach every, everything basically is you know we'll take any piece of Torah mm. and we will, we will learn it mm -hmm. meaning read it translate it and then we will just try and get clear what is going on here we won't mm -hmm. leave anything unquestioned okay. it's basically questioning every single possible thing we can in the text and understanding a a pshat, right, an understanding of, of it. Mm. Okay, so the question is, you know, we, just for the sake of tonight, we're going to take something from Tukhi because it's very self-contained, we can do one teaching. Mm. There's six chapters, we can pick anything you want. Mm. You, you pick a, you know, pick a, I mean, whatever, whatever, anything that, you ever looked at Tukhi Avos before? Yeah, yeah, for any, sure. Any of the chapters you looked at? Yeah, mm, for sure. Which ones all? Just some of the, you know, some of the teachings. Um, some of them, yeah, some of them are brutal. Some of the things that the rabbis say. Uh -huh. Brutal. Yeah. That's what? cold in its fire. Yeah, just the nature of, you know, how, you know, where they discuss, I can't remember exactly which one, but, you know, they discuss the, some of the meaninglessness of people's, other people's lives. So they're contrasting, they're almost carving out their identity, the Jewish identity here, where they were speaking about, you know, experiencing exile. And, the, the madness of Rome and what was going on around them. So they're the way they, pushing down that. Well, they're just the, the way how they show the almost it's how desolate it, you know some of it was, how meaningless some other lives were, like a, how much of a wasteland they were compared to the the, the fire of the Torah. Is that which is what a lot of them a lot is, of them discuss? Is that something you seemingly relate to as negative? Um, Black fire, white fire, isn't it? I don't know what that means. What I'm saying is that is, is that it's just the it's just the nature of the language. It's light and shadow, you know. That's the, the the Jewish way. Um, ultimately, in its essence, it has to be. Mm -hmm. They talk about light things and warm and bubbly and nice things, and then they talk about things in a very dark way. Well, you know, it's all for the light, but that's how they. That's how they discuss it. So that yeah, that's some of the, some of the. Um, I could I could actually pull out the verses if you would. Great, you perfect. To the yeah. ones that I, I'm, to, I'm actually referring to. Um, here, look what removes here an evil eye, evil inclination, hatred of other people remove a person from this world. You know that's that's a, like remove a person from this world. Because let's just, I want to look, I always like to look at the Hebrew. Okay. So, so Rabbi Oshua. What number, what number, what number, Mishnah? Tet Zion. Great, so this is a big one. We're about to start. Achavrusa. <laughs> it's the first piece of Torah we're going to learn. It's Mishnah, it's Pukki Avos, chapter 2. Mishnah, Yud Zion, Rabbi Yossi Omer. Right, I just want to read it. Yehi, Mom, yeah, that one, number 17, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yehi, Mom, and Chavercha, Chaviv Alecha, Kishalach. No, it's the one above. No, the one above. Tet Zion, 16. Rabbi Yossi Omer. Ayin Hara. Okay, the evil eye, the Yetzirah, and the inclination, the evil inclination, the sinas habrios, and the hatred of 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 others and ones, the brios, the creation, the world, the created Mitzi, ones. What is that? Mitzion. One second. Mitzion. Mo, mo, Motzion takes the, out. What's the origins of that? What's the origins? What is that? Yeah, word? Uh, the root is yatsa. Yatsad. To you remove. You see it, Mr. Ryan. You, you know they say you see it, Mr. Ryan. The, the going out of Egypt, taking to out. Remove. Yeah, or you exit, and an exercise will say yes. exit, right? So that's the root of going out. So the sinas habrias, the ha the hating of, of, of the people, of people, motzin es ha'adam min ha'ilam. It removes, it takes out the man from the world. That's a brutal thing to say. Okay, isn't it? let's just think about this. Can we just take it back? So Rabbi Yeshua says, right? So ayin hara. First of all, what is that? What is ayin? What is the evil eye? Um, the evil eye. Well, what is that? What is that like an eye that is floating in in somewhere that's watching you? So we have to, we have to. That's what, what we're doing. What? what is the evil eye? Because a lot of people, even across cultures, it's one of those unique things that exists beyond just the Jewish culture. Turkish people, Middle Eastern people, all have an, an eye, this blue and white painted eye thing, hanging in their houses, okay. and that's supposed to be the evil eye or wards off the evil eye. People that, wear that things the, around their necks. That's as a counter to the evil eye. Well, it's some sort of no amulet or some sort of adornment to mark uh, mark the belief system around that because it's so mysterious that. Okay, so let's define it. What's the evil eye? Judaism obviously has a concept of ayin hara, right? So what is it? So we have to answer. We have to answer that question. Number one, what is it? I mean, the number one question is who's Rabbi Yeshua, but we're not dealing with that now. Okay, 
Ayin hara. What is what is the evil eye? So I'm saying uh, the, un- the understanding. One of the understanding. I don't know. What is an evil an evil eye? So that it's not just a uh, collective. It's an evil eye. So someone possesses something that. Ex- it's not an. It's the hey. There's a hey there. The evil eye. It's a definite thing. We're not talking about. I don't know. What, I don't know. The English. Ha- no, it's uh, the. Forget the English. The English is an. It's I, eye of the evil. So ayin hara. It's not the evil eye. It's eye of the evil. Yeah. Okay. Eye of, eye of the bad. Or, yeah. Beautiful. Let's say, so what is the eye of the bad? I'm, saying, I'm going to offer a suggestion. What, would you, you give your vision, what would you reckon? I would say that it's not a... The vision, perceptual vision, real vision, like I see you, I see this space, is one factor, but there's another form of seeing. That's bad? Why is that called? Why, why no, there's nothing bad, bad. I'm okay. not saying that. That's, what, that's almost like um, walking or, or you, know, you can experience the direct physical world, but there's another dimension behind that. Um, where there's a battle, a whole battle in, in terms of intention, thought, exactly. what leads to behaviour. So it's the step, is the the nature of the eye and um, inclination. That's the. There's a fire. There's a there's a fire there as well. But it's the eye here. It's the mind's eye. Or the artists use it. It's also for creativity. For if you shut your eyes, you dream. We were talking about dreams just before. You know, you're using your inner eye. You're using your inner sight. And that is why the tefillin is on the forehead, why many cultures also use the middle of the forehead. So there's that space of imagination, of contemplation, of thinking, of thought, of visualization. And that's where, that's where, the, ev- that's where the eye is lo- located. If it is evil, that is a, that's a, that's a comment. it means somehow it's become inverted, it's become so distorted, second. it's not clear. According to this, though, that there, is a given, there, is a, there is a given that there is a concept of an, an eye that's evil. In other words, it exists, right? Because it's not saying that one that, you know, looks with an evil eye. It's saying the, the evil eye removes one from the world. In other words, it's there. So I, I, I'm saying, is that, is that, do you understand that from the, from the word? In other words, it's there. It's, it's a reality. No, I'm not agreeing. That's what it, that's what it says. Eye in hara. The, the eye of evil, and then it goes on at the end. The eye of, of, ev- the, eye of the evil removes one from the world. So, so meaning... There's this thing called the eye of the evil. The way I understand it is, when a person looks outside of himself through that eye of the evil, meaning through the evil way of looking at things, meaning he looks, you know, either he has a thought, a bad thought about someone, or he has a bad wish about someone, or he looks negatively on someone, all the bad stuff. If a person projects that through just, just through his, not even in speech necessarily, just like in just his thought process, that is what we call eye in hara. And by the way, that can actually do major things in terms of that, that type of thing can cause things. In other words, one understanding is... How do you mean that? I mean like this. Ayin Hora is... We call it Ayin Hora. Everyone says Kanena Hora, right? You know, people say, mm. I, have, I have three kids, Kanena Hora. Mm. Okay, well, that's kind of ward that off because mm. when people are very ostentatious or outward in terms of what Hashem's blessed them with, whether with money, with children, with, with their wives, with their cars, whatever it is, if a person looks at them and says, you know, the type of thing like, how come this guy has that, or what, what you know, or why does he deserve that, or what's he doing with this, or etc. Mm. That, that, when the person does that, when he expresses that, that thought of the evil eye, what happens? Hashem immediately passes a judgment on the other guy as to whether it's fitting for him to have that or not. If he's a good guy and it's fitting and he's supposed to be having these things, that's fine. But if not, Hashem will sit in based in a judgment as to whether that guy really deserves to have that car, whatever it is. Why? Because of the other person's eye and horror. Because of his evil eye. That's why in, in, very much in Judaism, or sort of very religious people, they understand this, they very much conceal everything. People, women, when they're pregnant, they conceal it to the very end. People that earn money, why whatever. Why is it called an eye? Why isn't it called the thing? Or the moment? Or because the it judgment? all comes from the eye. What eye? From the seeing, from the human being seeing. That's where it all comes from. It's not. That's what it's, that's what it's saying. It's not. It's not just from there. But that's what this it's is here. Deeper than that, it, because it's ultimately why it's the way in which you look, isn't it? That's what makes it. Yeah. No. You asked me a question. Why is it described in? You, you said why is it eye and eye? Because it's through the eye that the person has that thought. It could be that psychologically it's from the brain or whatever it is. But yeah. Bottom line, if you had to pick a part of the body where this is expressing itself, this is happening. It's through the human being's eye. So, it's the eye. Of evil, we're not talking about the source of it. 
what's what's what, you know the chemistry behind it, where it's happening, the the, the heart, the mind. We're not talking about that, but in terms of the physical part of the body, so you also get a good eye, and you get the bad eye. You get eye and hat off. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. Yeah. At the moment, we're just defining the first part of the mission: eye and hara, the evil eye. But now we have to ask the question. But then it says the evil inclination, so that is about the. But let's not get onto that. Let's just understand this though. What, what is the, the evil eye? What did the mission say the evil eye did? It removed. What did it do? It removed the per, the person from the world. And that question is why. What does it mean? In other words, so so now we defined it. A person with the evil eye is looking badly on people. He's judging people. He's saying, "How come this guy has that? How come is this?" He looks badly, right? Wherever it's coming from, you're right. I'm not, I'm not defining where it's coming from. Wherever it's coming from, but it's coming. So that removes the person from the world. Why? Because that's what the mission says. Mm. So we have to we have to ask the question why and then answer it. If we can't do that, we don't know the mission. Um. Well, essentially, it's distorting. What does that mean? Um, because. By the way, just to understand, you, before this, you just you describe this mission as like dark and like. Harsh and like okay, so I'm saying that's the background of how we're kind of merging the solution. It's, it's, it's very disturbing. So, so I'm saying, let's see if we can understand it. What, what does it mean? Why, why is it true that the person that has this iron horror, put that guy, whoever that guy is, that guy that looks at things that way, or sometimes he looks at things that way, but he expresses the, he utilizes this concept of iron horror. That guy. Why does that remove the Adam, the person from the world? What does that mean? Because it's not literal, is it? Well, essentially, it's not literal, it's is it? Not, no, it isn't. Okay. Um, you're not. It's not within the um, the pure order of things. It's distorting. It's distortion, and it's a confusion. Okay. So multi. Okay. So um, you know, this is it's, it's, a, it's not a it's not at all a straightforward thing. There's a whole there's a whole book in inside of this this one sentence. So it's let's, let's just try and give us, uh, try and get some conceptual understanding of it. Well, it removes the, the person that everyone from the has their own path and their own order, and that if someone looks, yeah, there's a, there's a discusses in the Gemara, isn't it? That's if you look at another person's field, or, or um, you know, you're not allowed to one of the the Ten Commandments. You're not allowed to you know think or, or look upon another person's wife. You know, those are the like core practical applications. Why does it remove a guy from the world? Because those are not things that are, um, you, they're not of your order, of your, um, of your sense, of your being, of your, uh, of your psyche. Um, ultimately, it's like each, each person has a, a soul and a body, has their own container, their own vessel. And so they have their own sense of, uh, like a, a path of, of light. And then if you stray off that path, you enter a, a shadowy world, and that's essentially what what it's saying. It's trying to paint it in a very black and white way. Um, you can stray off if you stray off the path. You remove yourself from the world. It, essentially, your your own world, your your own your own infinite pot potential, I guess, or your own your own sense of being.